well, as a second, um, uh, I would say, independent uh, issue or idea that I want you to look at uh, this week, uh, there are a couple things I've given you. One is, uh, as I said, by Sterner called The Folly of Internet Freedom, the mistake of talking about the Internet as a human right, and Hillary Clinton's uh, speech on Internet freedom that she gave I think in 2010, yeah, when she was uh, Secretary of State in the Obama administration. Uh, this is back when we had a serious government. I don't know if you remember that time before this guy came around, and we actually had we actually had a serious uh, executive. And we won't go into that, but you know, there it was not too long ago when the American Secretary of State uh, could come up and make a speech that was this. Uh, you know, had this kind of uh, moral uh, authority. But, uh, you know, hey, we're not, this is not a class about politics or history, except that it is. But, you know, anyway, um, an interesting set of texts that we started really with this text by Sterner, The Folly of Internet Freedom, the, the mistake of talking about a freedom to use the Internet. Talk, the mistake of talking about use of the internet as a human right, that is the idea that, it, that that's wrong, that, um, you know, it's a mistake to think of internet use as a human right. Uh, and I thought it would be good, since he does criticize uh, Clinton's speech, the speech he gave in 2010, to also give you the speech. And, you know, one of the first things you realize is that he's, he's not being fair to her at all. Um, I, I think that he's an outright accuser of, of things, but he omits parts of her speech that would, I think, correct uh, an impression that he gives uh, just basically incomplete and uh, it's not fair representation of what she said. But I thought it would be good to um, include it anyway and include them both uh, as uh, documents about a certain idea. And, and that is the idea that the internet is a good uh, that the internet is a, a good in, in the sense of a political good in itself, uh, that the internet is a force in itself for freedom. Uh, you guys, um, supposing and most of the people who are taking this class are, you know, college, traditional college age, uh, most of them, um, I'm 50 years old. So I remember a time, not only of course, before the internet, but I remember when the internet first sort of became a reality for, for people and the ways in which people imagined it, what it was for, its impact on society. And, and in, in the early 90s, when the internet really became a reality for most people, it was sort of the Al Gore information superhighway idea of the internet, that, that the internet was something that uh, was 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 going to be a good for everyone because it was going to democratize information. Um, this is before a lot of things became possible technically to do on the internet. This is before social media. Uh, this is before certainly before streaming video, which was a huge, huge leap in the usability of the internet. Something like watching YouTube videos, or watching Netflix or Hulu almost unimaginable that that would become something, not unimaginable, but it was not something that was available uh, in the early 90s. The internet was about print, really. Internet was about access to information, access to written things. Uh, even something like an image uh, took a long time to load. Um, so the idea was the internet was a gigantic library. You know, and there were many of the early important things on the internet uh, even before Wikipedia, I think there was something called Project Gutenberg, which was a, an attempt to get all of the classics of world literature up on the internet in an open way so everyone could, could read them. Um, the notion was that the internet would become a force for enlightenment and uh, also for free speech, right? Because of, as a means of expression and and, and I suppose that if one were to characterize Clinton's speech, what I consider to be a perfectly reasonable speech, which doesn't really make the kind of mistakes that Sterner says, it is an example of a sort of a Kantian view of the internet. That is, that uh, the internet is a is a place where people can 
find out what other people think and, and say what they think. And it's that arena for public speech that, that Kant thought was so important uh, for a, a society that was moving towards enlightenment. And, and she sees the dangers, not only the dangers of censorship, which she outlines, the ways in which the internet is censored, but also the ways in which the internet can be used as a, um, uh, as a means for repression. As she says here, on their own, new technologies do not take sides in the struggle for freedom and progress, which is exactly the kind of thing I think Stirner, in his criticism of the Obama administration sort of policy towards internet uh, freedom, uh, exactly the kind of thing he doesn't give her credit for, the nuances in her own uh, position. But that's exactly maybe what's at stake here is, is the question of whether a technology in itself can be a force for good or freedom, or whether it really is a matter of what the, the whole cultural societal situation is that determines whether a technology is a force for freedom. I think, I think that that point is really one of the stronger uh, points that Sterner makes. Um, it's just that he doesn't give Clinton the, the credit for making the same point. Um, that is one of the stronger points that Sterner makes is that the internet in itself is not a force for freedom. Um, that um, the uh, internet will be a force for freedom in a society that's already free. Uh, in a society that's unfree, it will probably internet, digital technology will be used as a means of oppression. I think that's an excellent point. Uh, and maybe that's that point that is, you know, looking back on those incredibly optimistic views when the internet was just getting started as a, a thing, um, the, the kind of point that people really didn't understand. That is, the old, the old information superhighway thing uh, is how this technology um, was ambivalent in terms of its political value that in a society that's unfree, it will be used as a means to further that unfreedom. Um, in a society that is already free, uh, it probably will have uh, the benefits that, that we thought it would. Uh, uh, this, this also leads us into next week's uh, subject, which is China and the internet. Another point that Sterner makes against Clinton is uh, questioning uh, this notion that um, we should have one internet, one global internet uh, that everyone has access to. Um, that is an interesting point, and that is maybe one of the uh, points that uh, may be most important in contemporary computer ethics, whether there needs to be, uh, you know, one internet, say, for everybody, because as we'll, as I think we know, and, and next week is an exploration of that, there isn't one internet for everybody. Um, there are many internets, but I would say that fundamentally there are two internets, right? There's the internet that we know, and then there's the Chinese internet. Uh, and I say that because the internet that we know is huge. And uh, you know what? The Chinese internet, which is another internet, is huge too. They're almost like competing versions of the internet. Um, whether that's a good or bad thing is, is something that I think that I would like to hear some discussion about, maybe this week or next week, really. Um, you know, Clinton had a vision, Obama had a vision of one big global free internet that was a subject of commerce free commerce, free conversation, free organizing. Uh, and that's just not the case uh, for many people in the world. Their internet is either heavily censored, like in uh, places like uh, China, or partially censored, let's say in places like Russia. Um, should there be one internet? Should there be one big global internet with sort of American style principles? Or should there be room for different internet, so don't necessarily subscribe to that.